Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Blue Ox base plate on a 2021 Jeep Cherokee. Now when flat towing your vehicle, there's gonna be five main components that are required. And the first one is gonna be our base plate. And that's gonna actually create the attachment point for our tow bar to attach the vehicle. And that brings us to our next one, which is gonna be the tow bar. And that's gonna make the connection between the RV and the vehicle. Moving along, you're gonna have a supplemental braking system. And that way, when you brake in your RV, it's gonna send that to the vehicle for proportional braking, allowing it to slow and come to a stop when you need to. Another one that you're gonna need is gonna be your safety chains. And that's gonna simply attach to your base plate to the hitch on the RV. And that way, if accidental disconnect happens, you're actually gonna keep these attached with those safety chains. The last one is gonna be your umbilical and your diode wiring, which is gonna send signals from the RV to the vehicle, allowing people behind you to know when you're using your turn signals or using your brakes, and you're also gonna have running lights. Now, if you're wondering what your base plate looks like actually installed and not hooked up, here it is. And as you can tell, it's actually pretty subtle. It's not sticking out too terribly much. In fact, it kind of gives it a nice tough look. So for your Jeep, this is a really great option as it is kind of hidden for the most part you're using factory holes a lot of other vehicles that we've installed base plates on it can be quite chunky and pretty unsightly this one i think looks pretty decent so here we have our base plate installed on our vehicle and it does have these removable arms that are nice for when you're not flat towing you can actually take those out giving it a little bit more of an oem appearance now these ones are actually designed to work with a Blue Ox tow bar, but if you have a different brand tow bar and you'd like to adapt to those, we have plenty of options here available at eTrailer, allowing you to make that connection. Something that I really like about this base plate is it's actually got an included bracket that you can mount to the bumper support here, and we were able to get our supplemental braking, breakaway switch, our airline, as well as our umbilical, all in a nice little tight compartment and not have to trim too much out of the front grille. Also included is gonna be your attachments for your safety chains. They're nice and accessible, sticking out a little bit past the bumper to where you shouldn't have to make any contact with your front bumper while putting these on, but also they're not sticking out too far to where they're unsightly. Now, something that's nice about this model in particular of Jeep is this is the Trailhawk. And normally you see those nice red tow hooks here that actually protrude from this hole. Well, it's actually utilizing that same hole. So that's gonna cut down on the amount of trimming and it's gonna give it a little bit more of an OEM look as well. Now, some other models, the non-Trailhawks, you will actually have to trim some of this out. So it's nice to be able to save yourself from that step. Besides the trimming, really it goes on pretty well pretty easy and it uses a lot of the OEM mounting points as you're gonna be taking off a few of the supports but replacing them with the actual base plate itself. So overall, pretty easy flat or base plate install. A lot of other vehicles can get pretty, uh, pretty involved. And this one, I was pretty happy. It's nice and easy. So I'm gonna show you the steps on how to get installed on your vehicle. We're gonna begin our installation by removing 13 plastic push pins uh, under here to get this shroud off. And you're gonna see there's gonna be six on each side, as well as one in the middle. So we're gonna go ahead and get these removed. Now, it's pretty easy to get a small flathead in here. You can just kind of pop these up. Plastic clips can be uh, a little temperamental at times and they tend to break if you're not gentle. So trying to get the center portion up is going to help get this out. Now, something I'd suggest picking up just for future uh, Anytime you're working on your car, if you have any of these plastic push pins, this interior panel uh, trim removal tool is really, really handy because you can kind of get underneath here and it's going to salvage these clips quite often. So you can kind of just get underneath there. So we'll be popping these out. Make sure you are holding on to all of your hardware for now because we'll need this for reinstallation. With our plastic push pins removed, this should actually come off pretty easy. Just making sure that you take time to slide them over these little plastic bumpers here and then work our way towards this front. Now set this aside in a safe spot because we will be reinstalling this later. So now we're gonna come to this portion of our front fascia. Here's our headlight and right here we have a T27 screw. We're gonna just go ahead and remove this. There's gonna be one on the other side so go ahead and remove that as well. So here I just use a muffin tin to organize some of my parts. That way I have all my pieces to go back as well as I can organize out the hardware that we'll be putting on. So if you have some cups or maybe some 
uh, extra Tupperware or whatever you may have to put those in. I highly suggest that. That way you have everything together and you're not searching for a couple loose ones of hardware when you're putting it all back together. So now we're going to go on the inside of our fender well. This is going to be on the front portion of the vehicle. There's going to be one, two, three eight millimeter screws. So we're going to go ahead and get those removed. And now we're going to be doing this on both sides of the vehicle. Now, while we're working on the lift here, you could say we're at an advantage, but for you guys at home, if you're having trouble getting to these, you can actually uh, turn your wheels to the inside or the outside, and that's gonna gain you a little bit better angle to be able to get a ratchet and a socket in there. So just a little helpful tip for you guys at home. So now that we have those three eight millimeters out, we actually have to gain access to a 10 millimeter bolt that's gonna be up here. Now we're gonna peel this back just enough to kind of get our hands in this little groove, which is kind of nice. And peeling this back just a little bit here, you're gonna see our 10 millimeter bolt head living up here. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky to get to, um, but we'll be needing to take these out on both sides. All righty. Now it does have a decent amount of thread, so it might take a little bit, especially at that angle, but once you get that out, go ahead and do that on the other side. On the lower portion of our bumper here on each side, we're gonna see this plastic rivet. We're gonna to need to remove that. So in order to do that, just take an eighth inch drill bit and we're gonna just put it in the center here and just slowly kind of drill out that center portion. And then once you actually puncture through it, you're gonna see it should pop out like that. Now go ahead and do that on the other side as well. Now along the front side, you're gonna have four 10 millimeter bolts. Now it's just the white colored ones, the dark ones, we're actually going to skip those. So one, two, three, four. So we'll go ahead and remove those now. So we're gonna be getting ready to remove our rear fascia. Before we do that, I'm actually gonna put some painter's tape along our lines here, and that's just gonna help protect our paint from cracking or chipping along the corners. So I'm gonna just kinda of follow along the headlight here as well as this painted portion on the fender, and that way, not only for removing it, but also for reinstallation, that's gonna help, again, prevent those scratches. Now I also suggest having a place set up to put your fascia to where it's gonna be safe, not fall over, and you might wanna actually grab an extra set of hands, and it's kind of bulky as one person to kind of move it around, so go find a friend, and that way you can get this off safely. So now to remove your fascia, you're actually gonna start in this area right here where our tab is, and just kind of work your way along the headlight. And it should get little pops here and there. It's gonna be a little tricky, so trying to kind of get some leverage here to work those tabs down the area here. There we go. This is a little tricky here, so I'm gonna see if I can't get this corner popped as well. It does look like there's a tab hanging there, so I'm gonna continue here and see if I can't get the rest of this popped up. So how I was able to get this actually off is using a trim panel uh, removal tool. This is just a plastic one, so it's not gonna scratch anything up. So this portion of our fascia sits in between here, and that's where our 10 millimeter was. So this will sit above that. So between this and this black plastic, Putting this wedge in there, kind of pushing this down and pulling outward will allow this to go past the opening here on this fender liner. Um, and that's gonna just kind of drop this down. And once this portion comes out, the rest of it comes out pretty easy. This is really where it's holding it tight. So in order to get there, you may have to kind of just peel this back a little. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can probably use uh, a flathead screwdriver should work fine. Just be careful and then just pry it on that black plastic right there. You're going to see that metal clip. Just push down on that, pulling this down and out, and you should get that to release. So now with your extra set of hands, now that we have this popped off, we're going to kind of get this to remove just by kind of prying this. I'm going to lift up here, kind of working our way out. Now on the driver's side, you're going to see this plug. You're going to need to remove that, so don't pull your face off too fast. So this yellow portion comes down, and this red should slide up. 
and then you'll hear it actually click, allowing that to kind of just slide up and over. Now underneath it might be kind of caught up on the under uh, body panel trim there, but with a little bit of wiggling, you'll have this off and then you can set it in a nice safe place. So now we're gonna go ahead and get our tow hooks taken off and we'll start by getting these two bolts here. They're gonna be 16 millimeter. So go ahead with your socket and take those out. There's gonna be two on each side. So now on the back side here of our tow hook, you're gonna see this large 30 millimeter nut. Now, sometimes they can be a little bit tricky at first to get loose, but once you kind of just knock it loose a little bit, it should come off by hand. So I'm gonna be just using a pair of channel locks just to kind of get a bite on it. And I think if I just kind of rotate my tow hook just a hair, that'll kind of get it loose enough to where the rest should come off by hand. So just with a little bit of rotation there, it's just gonna get some of that little bit of thread lock they have, and then you can see these come out pretty easy. So go ahead, you're gonna do this on both sides, and then you can set your tow hooks aside and keep them for later on. Now you will not be putting these back on the vehicle, so feel free to keep these. Oh. Now we're gonna be removing our frame extensions on both sides, and they're gonna have three 15 millimeter bolts, and some models will have a 10 millimeter nut here. This one just has this plastic uh, retainer clip, so we can go ahead, we can pry that one off pretty easily, um, and that should, you'll not need to put this back on, so if you damage the clip, it's not gonna cause any issues here. So a flat head will work. This trim panel, sometimes you can actually get behind it and pry it out. See, as we, as we see, it did break, but again, this will not be installed again. So as long as you get that off there, you can go ahead, get the 15 millimeters off, and then repeat on the same, or on the other side. So those long, bolts that we just removed, you're gonna to wanna to grab those as we're gonna be actually putting on the base plate portion. And to get the orientation right, you're gonna see that this little angled piece is gonna go out to the outside of the car here. And so your safety chain loop should be on the inside. So just make sure you grab the right one. And I'm gonna just feed one of these in here just to hold it. And what we're gonna be doing is putting a little bit of red Loctite on these. That way, over time, they're not gonna loosen up and back out. So if you need to pick up some Loctite, we actually have some here at E-Trailer. And you're just gonna to wanna to kinda of coat the threads. And mostly it just bolts into this area, so making sure that that's covered up. And then you can go ahead and feed them in. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same with my other. Now that those are kind of holding in place, I can go ahead and take this top one out and then we'll get some thread lock on those as well. Now I haven't fully tightened these down uh, because we need to get this bolt that we took off from our tow hooks up in place here. And to get it aligned, I actually had a little bit luck taking my impact and just tightening down this top one is that's gonna kind of cinch this in, allowing this to thread up. So make sure you go ahead and put a little bit of Loctite on this as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten this one up. And then I'm gonna do the same on my other two that I have. Now, you don't have to get too crazy with the impact as we're gonna go back with the torque wrench and get them to the proper settings. But go ahead, you can get these all in place and tighten down enough uh, on both sides of the vehicle. So now we're gonna go back and using the torque settings in our instruction manual, we'll go ahead and torque these down with our torque wrench. Now these are gonna have two different torque settings, so pay attention to that. 
And if you don't have a torque wrench, we actually have these here at E-Trailer, or generally you can rent them at an auto parts store. So next you're going to want to grab the long bolt as well as this washer and a split washer here that came with our actual base plate. Now this is going to feed into the back side of the, like where you actually put your arms in place. If you look in there, you're going to see a spot where this is going to be threaded and you're going to feed that through there. So it might help to look in the front when putting this in. That way you can kind of align it. Now go ahead and make sure you also have Loctite on this as well. So I'm just going to feed it to the back side of our removable arm portion here. And looking at the front, I can see the threads feeding into that threaded portion. And then once we have that threaded in, we can go ahead, tighten it up, and then come back with the torque wrench. We're going to do this on both sides of the vehicle. Now I'm able to push back my fender liner, and I have an, uh, a deep well socket on my torque wrench here. If you really need to get better access, you probably could take this um, actual air intake tube off and gain a little bit easier access, but this seems to be working just fine. So now go ahead, we're going to grab our front bracket to get our electrical components mounted up here. So this is actually going to sit on the back portion of the bumper, but in order to find where we're going to make our drill holes to run our hardware through, I'm actually going to kind of just take this and have the face almost flush with the actual front of the bumper here and kind of just make sure you're centered. And then once you're happy with that spot, you can go ahead. I'm using just a paint marker here. I'm just going to make a dot there and a dot right there. Now I'm going to go ahead, grab my drill bit and make some holes here, allowing our hardware to actually pass through. Now we need to run our safety cables through our actual frame here and really what we're trying to do is get a nice connection to where we're using the back side of the frame and also attaching here to our base plate and that way if for whatever reason our hardware fails this is going to hold on to the frame of the vehicle so there's a bunch of different ways you can kind of route it um, different ways may work better for you this is going to work i think pretty well so when you get to the passenger side there's going to be the belt that's right there so you want to make sure there's no slack kind of just hanging out that way the cable's not riding along the belt while driving the vehicle. Over here on the driver's side though, it's pretty open. So we're gonna loop it through this opening here on the base plate. And you're gonna wanna make sure both safety cables are actually looped through it. So this one looks like I'm gonna have a little issue with some slack, so I'm gonna just feed this down. And that's gonna allow us to get these all hooked up. And it's routed behind here. So that way it has that support from the core support and the frame that it's attaching around. So go ahead, tighten this down once you have them both looped in. And then just kind of double check where the cable's running, make sure it's not putting pressure or riding against anything that's gonna move. And that's pretty much gonna do it for the base plate installation. And really all that's left to do is get our fascia put back on. And those rivets we drilled out, there's actually new ones in the kit. So we'll be putting those back in place. But before we do that, we're actually gonna be running a few more components to this flat toe system. So leaving the fascia off is actually gonna gain us access to be able to run our wires a lot easier. So after I get that all installed, I'll actually come back and show you how to get that fascia put back on. Now, in order to get your fascia back on, you're gonna to need to trim out where your connection points are gonna be. And ours kind of being having our airline as well as our breakaway switch kind of all in the same square. It's just gonna kind of follow this pattern here. Yours may vary on how you mounted it up, but if you kind of just mock it up, you'll get an idea of where it's at. I'd use a paint marker like I have, just to kind of get an idea of where to cut out. And using just a pair of snips here, I should be able to get through this pretty easily. Now with that section out, I'm gonna go back and just kind of clean this up a little bit with a file, and that way it's nice and smooth and looks a little bit more factory. Now if you do have any leftover paint markings from your pen, no problem, just a little bit of alcohol should take that off. 
So now with an extra set of hands, we're actually gonna put our fascia back on. Now, do remember there is this plug, so make sure that is plugged in. So I'm gonna do that here first. Get these little nubs in first. Now, if you remember the rivet that we drilled out earlier, we actually have two new ones that come with the actual base plate, and you're gonna want to plastic rivet this. Now, if you don't have a plastic rivet gun, we actually have these here at E-Trailer, and if you've never used one before, pretty easy. You're just gonna pull that up all the way, and then as you pull, it's gonna start to get a little bit tight, and then it should break off once you're at that good point. Hey guys, so we're here with Pat Hayden, and he, uh Got his motor home here for us, and of course, the Jeep Cherokee, and we're getting with a tow bar set up, and we're gonna have Joe kind of walk him through how we can make this happen, and maybe hear a little bit from Pat later on of uh, kind of why he went with this setup or any other kind of things like that, nothing too crazy. So uh, Joe, why don't you take the floor, mm -hmm. and uh, Pat, if you have any questions, just throw them at Joe and he'll handle you, so. Okay, thanks. Okay, so this is pretty much just like pulling a trailer, mm -hmm. except instead of having the coupler up here and then your connection point, you're gonna have them here and here. And you got the add-on locks here instead of the pin and clips that's normally here. So you use the little barrel keys um, and it fit in here. Um, right now we have it all stretched out. So a lot of times, uh, you know, uh, you stretch out and this actually won't move. So that's when you use these right here to break it apart. So I don't know if you actually, this is, this is a used tow bar. So I'm, I don't know if this is new to you or you it ever? It is new. I've, I've never okay. used it before. So. Yeah, I don't know if I'm covering, you know, recovering ground. But yeah, so when you park it and it doesn't move like that, You'll break this, and that should break it loose that way. Okay. So then you can get your locks out here. So. So when when I attach it, do do I normally pull it all the way out and then attach it and then take up the slack? By yeah, it will, we'll take this one apart. And I'll give you. I'll show okay. you a couple things. So if you want to, let's get this cable out of the way. And then. Oh. And that's just the safety cable, right, Joe? Yeah. So, and turn it and it comes apart. There you go. And like I said, yeah. So if it's not like that, you would have to break this loose here. Uh -huh. And then you can let it come down like that. Oh, okay. And that's how it comes apart generally. And then the cables are pretty self-explanatory. We'll go with those two. Um, let me get, let me see the keys and I'll do the other side too. So normally they're compressed just to store, but when we're towing right, it, right? Because yeah, we'll get this all disassembled. We'll cover that okay. in a second. Okay, I'll put these guys right here. And then since this is sitting above the cables, we don't have to worry about it. But if you grab this half, mm -hmm. you pick it up. You can see how the pin goes in there, mm -hmm. and you can put it like that. Oh, it keeps it nice and tight. Yeah, and you you have a cover that goes. I think you bought a cover to go yep. over this. Yeah. And then the rest of the rule is just like, you know how you had your, had your uh, electrical in your trailer to your truck before? Right. Same thing, except it's in the opposite direction. You got, you take the, you of course, you take it off of the car. Right. And on the six pole connector, always make sure to put it in correctly and this pin's always facing to the top. Understood. And then it just goes in like this. And then make sure if you can, see that edge right there? Yes. Catch this so it can't come out. Oh, I got it. So yeah. it's got a little Yeah, it's a little there. safety latch, yeah. Okay. Eventually it'll loosen up, but it'll be tight. And sometimes, if you have a hard time pushing it in, I like to grab it like this mm -hmm. to get better leverage on it. This is your airline for your um, braking system right here. Okay. This is just like a quick disconnect, like any other like air tool. Um, Might be a little cold. Oops. There, way back there. I had to grab it like that. <laughs> and that just pops and you just push it on. And it snaps off. Yeah, and it snaps, whoops. And it snaps off too, if you don't do it right. <laughs> okay, just so like that. is this running a, a vacuum from the bus? No, or it's, or is this a, it's creating a pressure. It's pressure, it's air straight, pressure. pressure, yeah. And it sends it to the master cylinder? Yeah, it sends it the to the uh, brake pedal. Brake There's a little cylinder on the brake okay, pedal. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Oops, there it is. Okay. 
And it's the same thing right here. Mm -hmm. And this thing is, per and this is your safety, uh, the orange cord here is your, is your safety cable, breakaway switch cable. Always disconnect like this. Right. Don't pull this out. Okay. Because what happens when you do this, it'll apply the brakes and it'll make it, you'll apply the brakes as long as there's air pressure in there. So can so right now, this car is undrivable without that in there? Yeah, because the brakes could be dragging with, okay. with emergency so pressure. So always, always leave it inside, yeah. You hear that little pop, right? Yeah, so like, yeah, disconnected the, uh, um, the contacts. Yep, gotcha. So yeah, so always leave it like that. And if you do pull it out, I mean, you have air bleed out eventually, but mm -hmm. the problem is that you get this dirt inside here, and mm -hmm. then it can't work as advertised, so. Gotcha. Yep. So, really, that's about it. And, of course, on your cables here, like on your trailer, uh -huh. when you get the chains, you uh, crisscross them. Gotcha. And you like, you saw earlier, have a hook on here. And so, if, how do these come? You yeah. Just pull these Take these out, out, you pull it, and rotate it. Oh, that's really clean. Mm -hmm. So make sure you have it tab horizontal, then you push it back in, and that's it. Got it. And then so now, like when you just pull up to you here, mm -hmm. it's, you don't have to be perfect, but it helps be as, you know, as good as possible. And then once you have it as close as possible, you don't have to worry about it being perfect because the arms are, un you can make them uneven. Right. And then you don't have to worry about it because when you take off, um, it'll pull, just when you pull straight, it'll lock both sides it'll in. Nat natural, it'll natural lock it, yeah. Out. Okay. And also, you, when you drive off, as soon as you can, do like a little turn like this. To stretch each side. Yeah, just stretch each side out so they lock in, okay. yeah. It does, it's not much, it's very little, but it's like a, with your steering wheel, and that's right, probably about right. enough. So I'll go ahead and have you grab one side, and we'll go ahead and put it back together. Okay. Let's see here. There you go. Looks like you have to have the key to oh, lock them on. The yeah. Not yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's so many different kinds, it's hard to remember. It doesn't help that it's pretty chilly out. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, pretty darn cold. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be nicer in the spring and summer when we're actually using these, right? Yeah. Okay, let's sit and get these on. Now, inside your car, you should have two little covers that, that plug these up, too. Okay. And it's, way, it's right there, right let's above there. Now, are you going under? Is that how you're doing it? Uh, typically, most people go under. Okay. Yep. Okay, that's all. Give it a good tug and it'll come off, and you're good. And then. And then uh, yeah. and then cross and these. Make sure both are crossed. Okay, and then we can do your electrical. Okay. And remember that pin has to stay up. Right. All right. Yep. Well, that's fairly simple. Yeah, it's not too bad. I think this is the easy part. The hard part sometimes is to um, uh, is putting your Jeep, because it's a little, com little complex to put the Jeep in tow mode. Right. But that's about it. And like, so these won't be doing locking or anything like that until they're stretched out completely. Right, and then they'll be up. Mm -hmm. right. But on the mechanical side of things, you don't have to worry about that. And what's nice about your braking system, you just plug it in and it's activated. There's nothing you turn on the inside of a car. And when, I, when these uh, air chucks are pulled out, it automatically shuts off. Right, it's just right. like an air, like regular air hose. Like right. when you take the tool right. off, yeah, basically, this is a big giant tool now. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. That seems pretty simple. Yeah, and one, I'll go ahead and show you the, the pedal. Uh, if you want to look over my shoulder here. Sure. This is the cylinder right here. It gets air pressure. Right. And it also creates vacuum so it can push the pedal down. And this will operate like that. Not much maintenance on it, but just make sure that it's nice and tight on the pedal. Right. And then if you can see how I'm wiggling the cable. Yes. Yeah. It should be like maybe a half inch of play or so. Okay. So you want to do that. Sometimes it'll, the cable, 
Uh, for some reason, sometimes you'll have to adjust it eventually. Okay. But it's not a big deal. Um, a lot of times, people don't even have to mess with it. But don't be. Give it an inspection once in a great while. Okay. And you just want to go ahead and put it in tow mode now. Uh, yes, I got to remember how to do that. <laughs> yeah, always get your owner's manual because every model, some model years vary, yeah. so we always just go by that. All right, well, Pat's got his uh, Jeep ready in tow over here, and he's all ready to go. Pat, any last questions you have no, for us? No, it looks like you all did a, a real wonderful job. Um, it, it was definitely worth the five and a half hours drive uh, to, to hear to, to you all to do it right. Awesome. Well, that's mm -hmm. so lovely to hear. We're very so, happy with it. Awesome, Pat. Very well, happy. I'm sure we'll see you around hopefully sometime thank soon. You. Again, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. Joe, thank you, of course, for yeah. helping us through. And don't forget you, us back there, and don't back up. No, yeah, <laughs> back up. yeah I got that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, guys. <laughs> thank you. And that was a look and installation of the Blue Ox base plate on a 2021 Jeep Cherokee.